Good evening, and welcome to this time of prayer and Bible study with the family of St. Andrew's Baptist Church in Columbia, South Carolina. I'm Pastor D. Vaughn, and uh, it's my privilege on behalf of our church family and our church staff to say that you're welcomed here. We're really glad that you're here and hope that you will be blessed by this time of us opening our hearts to God and to each other. Let me mention that all through the time we're together on Facebook, you're invited to share prayer requests by entering a comment on the broadcast. That way everyone who's watching can see it and they can join you in prayer for that need. Even if you don't have a specific prayer request, I hope you'll take a minute to sign in just to let others know you're here because we all feel strength and encouragement from knowing that there are others with us who are praying and studying. We miss being together in God's house and seeing physically each other, but we can at least see the names here and know that we're in the company of Christian friends and feel the strength and encouragement that that brings. So I hope you'll do that. Um, let me mention something in connection with the life of our church. We have come to the time of year when it's time for us to nominate members of our church family to serve as deacons and trustees. Now, if we were meeting together every Sunday, you would get an insert in your bulletin several weeks in a row that would give you uh, an opportunity to nominate persons to serve in those capacities. But since we're not together, we need you to enter your nominations by email or by mailing them to the church. The Messenger Church Newsletter that you'll receive this week will give you some instructions on how to do that, and I hope you'll participate in that very important leadership decision. You know, we're continuing on and putting everything in order, looking forward to the day when it's good for us to be back together and safe for us to worship in each other's presence again. I never cease to be amazed at how God works and uh, I saw another example of that just today, uh, and I wanted to share something with you. Uh, Julia Muirhead is a dear friend of mine in the upstate. Uh, we walked through some tragic times together uh, 21 years ago now with the death of her daughter, Amanda. And uh, we have continued to be friends ever since. And we corresponded some recently. And that helped you understand the Facebook message that she sent me. But this experience that she had just highlights to me how God intervenes to send his love where it's needed. So I'm going to read you Julia's message to me. She writes, so I have to share this. I thought I had your cell phone number. So I texted you to thank you for the card you sent to me. The number I have for you has been assigned to someone else unbeknownst to me. I sent him the message I wanted to send to you. He immediately responded that while you sound like a wonderful man, hope you took note of that, he believes the message was intended for him as he's lost and needs a purpose to continue living. I got to explain Amanda's story with him, that's her daughter who passed away, and your involvement and help through the darkest days of my life. He shared how he feels that he needed the message from me and that through the message, he's been given new hope. Maybe me, but I feel like this is a God wink. He needed the text. Either way, I thank God for you. You made a difference in my life and in Amanda's life. May God hold you in the palm of his hand, Julia. Uh, I never cease to be amazed at how even through what seems to be an accident in life, God may put us in the very situation where his grace is most needed. And we may be bringing a little cool water to someone who's about to die of thirst. So thank you, Julia, for sharing that. And uh, it's my joy to remember everyone who's watching tonight that God is working in your life that same way. 
open your eyes and your heart to the way that he works. I want to share some prayer concerns with you tonight, and I know that you have others that you'll be sharing through uh, the comments that you enter on, on Facebook. Our church has been through an incredible time of loss lately. Some of it related to COVID and other reasons too. But we're grieving a lot, and many of us are grieving. We lost our brother, Glenn Knight, not long ago to COVID. We pray for Madeline and for their family as they're grieving his loss, and as all of us are. We had a beautiful remembrance of Glenn in our sanctuary uh, last week, and his family shared such beautiful stories about his life and his legacy. And we're all grateful that we got to ride with Glenn, that we got to share some of our life's journey with him. Betty Rogers passed away this past week from pancreatic cancer. We want to pray for Mr. Dave and all of the children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren. We shared a memorial service in their home a week ago now. And they're going to celebrate Miss Betty's life with a service all of us can attend when the time is right for us to regather for worship without all of these COVID restrictions. But in the meantime, we pray for Mr. Dave and all of his family. And, oh, we thank God for being in the presence of such a beautiful one as Miss Betty. Faye Roberts has also passed away from COVID. Service for her will be uh, Saturday at 11 a.m. at uh, Bush River Memorial Gardens. Now, it's going to be live streamed on the Dunbar Funeral Home webpage. So if you go to Dunbar's webpage before 11, you'll find a way to link on to see the service through your device. So if you are concerned and unable to get out, you can be a part of the celebration of her life electronically. We want to pray for Ann Wood in the death of her sister, Marcy. Um, Ann has stood by her sister and loved her for a long, long time and many, many times has, has named her in prayer in our church family and we prayed with her. But Marcy's struggle is over and new life has begun for her. But for us here, we miss her and we pray for Ann and their family as they're dealing with that loss. Gleaton Rickenbacker, who's one of the newer members of our church family, he and Paulette, uh, have had a death in their family as Gleaton's sister Sarah has passed away. We grieve that loss with them and ask God to be near and dear to their hearts as they're dealing with, with grief. It's such a complicated, difficult time for all of us. We have good news on Steve Bumgardner. He has graduated from the hospital and he has moved to Encompass a Rehab Center where he's working to regain strength. He's walked a little bit on the walker and is making progress and improvement. He's troubled by how restricted he is with visitors. It's just a situation where you can't come and go because of the virus. But uh, Ellen is sharing updates with us and we're encouraged to see progress in Steve's life and we pray that will continue. We also want to lift up Garland Timmerman, who's a patient at Park Ridge Hospital dealing with some digestive difficulties. And uh, she's receiving good treatment and our, our understanding from Dr. John is that she's making good progress and doing well. You know, we all just wonder how well Dr. John's doing without her there to keep an eye on him. But uh, we do pray for Ms. Garland and that God will continue to work in her life and bring her healing. I want to ask you to pray for a friend of mine in the upstate. His name is Milton Smith. Um, for many years, he was the editor of the Woodruff News, the small town newspaper in Woodruff, South Carolina. And he was a member of my congregation. Um, one of his children was born the first day I served as pastor of that congregation. So whenever I see her having a birthday, I know how long it's been since I started there. 
but Milton and his wife Vicky have both contracted the COVID virus. And Milton is in the hospital. His symptoms have, have grown difficult and his breathing is difficult right now. Uh, Vicki Ray, his wife, is at home and so far has been able to deal with the virus through home care. But pray for the two of them and their children, Morgan and Ray, as they're helping to look after mom and dad. And I pray that they will all progress. A really neat and loving family. And um, I wish them all the best and pray God's healing mercies for them. I know you have others on your heart. And I know you're thinking about our nation and our world and so many difficult situations where we need God's grace and need strength and perseverance. So let's go to God together and ask him for that as we unite our hearts in prayer. Loving Father, we come to you in this moment of life, a unique time for each of us, a time when we need to stop and remember your blessings and spend a little time counting them. For even in this very inconvenient world right now and a place where there's so much death and sickness and difficulty, we are blessed beyond measure in so many ways. We need to remember that and live in the joy and the strength of knowing we are your beloved and blessed children. We pray for our nation and our world as it deals with this coronavirus. We pray for those who are doing research to find a vaccine that can help us be strong and overcome it and no longer be limited by the fear of it. We pray for the health care workers on the front lines, risking their health and even their very lives to care for others and to help see them through the darkness of illness. Guard them and protect them, I pray. We thank you, Lord, for a great week we had in Vacation Bible School, even though it had to be online this year. But thank you for families who were touched and children who learned and many good things to celebrate. Father, we lift up those who are grieving, and I think that's all of us right now. As very dear Christian friends, and for some of us family and relatives, lifelong friends, have left us and we praise you that they're in your presence, that you've healed every illness and met every need, and that your promises are now complete in their lives. We know the sun is shining brightly on the other side. But for us in our humanity, that light is blocked by storm clouds of grief and sadness. We know it's there, and we'll see it again. But for right now, the rain is falling in our hearts. Be with all of those who are walking the road of grief right now, Father. We thank you for your word. And that when we open your word, we're never alone. The Holy Spirit works with us. Just as the Holy Spirit breathed your truth to make the scriptures, the Holy Spirit breathes within us to reveal your truth and to apply it to our lives. So I pray you do that for us tonight. And we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. I failed to mention uh, a reminder for you to be with us in worship Sunday at 1030. We're continuing our series of messages on making peace. This week looking at the process and the power of confronting our differences in love. That's the tough part but it's the most important part if we want to see healing happen and true peace be established. So we'll be looking at some words from the Gospel of Matthew and some passages from Galatians that will inform us of how we can confront and yet do so in a Christ-honoring and relationship healing kind of way. Thank you for being with us in worship. We have some special music for you Sunday. and. Uh, some things that will be well worth sharing. Invite friends to join us for that broadcast. Right now, though we don't have the opportunity of entering the building, we do have the opportunity to welcome friends 
who might be open to watching a Facebook broadcast who aren't ready to walk in a church building yet. But if they get to see who we are and get to sense the love that this family shares, I believe God will open hearts so that they too will want to come and be a part of the St. Andrews family. So share those invitations. Do that work as God gives you the opportunity. I want to share a song with you uh, this evening that I think relates to what we're studying. I think my guitar is too far to reach without moving. Hang on a minute. Be back after this message, right? Uh, we're going to talk about the stress that comes from excessive demands, those times when we let ourselves be stretched too thin, overly committed, and we're not able to give our best to God or to anyone else. And as I thought about uh, our need for Sabbath, as I thought about Christ's example of taking time to be alone with the Father in the midst of his short, so urgent ministry, I thought about this song in the garden that talks about the time we can share with Christ and the great rewards of taking that time to be in his presence. I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and the voice I hear calling on my ear, the Son of God discloses, and He walks with me, and He talks with me, and He tells me I am His own, and the joy we share as we Tarry there, none other has ever known. I'd stay in the garden with him, though the night around me is falling, but he bids me go through the voice of woe, his voice to me is calling, and he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me I am his own, and the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever. up a book to read. That book has margins. There's space around the top and the left and the right and the bottom. And there probably is spacing between the lines so the letters aren't right on top of each other. And there are little indentations where a paragraph begins so that you can catch that beginning of a new unit of the writing with your eye. Those spaces don't have any words on them, but they're very important to us being able to read effectively. I don't know if you've ever tried to read text that has no spacing. The manuscripts of the New Testament 
were written at a time when papyrus or animal skin, whatever they were writing on at that time, was so precious and so expensive that they didn't waste any of it. So they wrote literally from top to bottom, side to side, and did not leave spaces between the words. So there are places in the Greek New Testament where you have to figure out where one word ends and the other, and the next word begins. But we find it much easier to read with margins, don't we? God has created us with the need for margins in our lives. There needs to be some open space, some sacred space, where we can be with Him, where we can renew our spirits, where we can rediscover our perspective. As one of my friends here on staff sometimes says, it's time for me to find my true north again. We need that. But it's one of the first things we cheat ourselves out of. How easy it is to let chores and details and urgent little projects and needs steal away the time that we need to be alone with God. God speaks to this in the scriptures a number of times in a number of ways. And he speaks to us most through the example of Jesus. But I want, I want to invite you first to look in the 16th chapter of the book of Exodus. Exodus chapter 16, and um, this was the gift of manna to the people of Israel on their journey. Manna is a great word in Hebrew. It's really two words, ma-na, and those two words literally mean, what's this? What is this? And that bread that God sent when they went out, they wondered what it was. They had never seen anything like it before. And the comment was, manna. And they called it manna. Okay. Look in chapter 16, verse 15. You'll find this very thing. When the Israelites saw it, the manna that God had sent, they said to each other, what is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread the Lord has given you to eat. This is what the Lord has commanded. Each one is to gather as much as he needs. Take an omer for each person you have in your tent. The Israelites did as they were told. Some gathered much, some little. And when they measured it by the omer, he who gathered much did not have too much, and he who gathered little didn't have too little. Each one gathered as much as he needed. But I want you to move down to verse 23, where Moses says there's an interruption in this pattern of daily gathering manna, and that is for Sabbath. Verse 23, he said to them, this is what the Lord commanded. Tomorrow is to be a day of rest, a holy Sabbath to the Lord. So bake what you want to bake and boil what you want to boil. Save whatever is left and keep it until morning. So they saved it until morning as Moses commanded, and it did not stink or get maggots in it. Eat it today, Moses said, because today is a Sabbath to the Lord. You will not find any of it on the ground today. Six days you are to gather it, but on the seventh day, the Sabbath, there will not be any. Nevertheless, some of the people went out on the seventh day to gather it, but they found none. God's provision for his people was faithful, and each day they had a part to play in it. He sent the manna, and they were to gather. They were to gather in proportion to what they needed for the people in their tent. And they were to do this faithfully six days out of the week. But God said, on that seventh day, I'm not sending manna because I don't want you to gather it. 
I want you to set apart that day for rest, to focus on your relationship with me, to be mindful of spiritual things and not let them be drowned out by the busyness of your lives. I love the detail of the story that while many of the people followed this and found it to be a true saying, some went out looking for manna even on the seventh day. I guess some people have to see to believe, don't they? Probably some of us would have been out there too. But God said to Moses and to his people, and through the scriptures he says to us, there's a time to be busy. There's a time to work. There's a time to gather. There's time to expend your effort, to use your gifts and your talents, to provide for those in your tent, to care for your family and for others as you have opportunity. But he says along with that, for life to be the way life is supposed to be, for us to be in right relationship with him and each other, there must also be a time of rest. Keeping the Sabbath is one of those things we don't understand very clearly. This is what troubles me. I see so many folks in our day who keep the same busy attitude toward life and the same stuffed full schedule on Sunday that they do any other day. But they set apart just a little bit of time to be in church or to watch it online. That's not keeping the Sabbath. The Sabbath calls for a different attitude, a different spirit. It's like the difference that you seek when you go on vacation. I've heard some of you say, and I've experienced it too, that sometimes you go on vacation and you don't actually change your mindset, you don't feel a difference in your emotions, in your spirit until the third or fourth day. And then finally you're able to relax a couple of days before you start gearing up to go back home. We need time to enter into a different kind of spirit. To stop being busy. To answer the call that says be still and know that I am God. Sometimes our busyness is a place to hide. Sometimes our busyness is a place where we try to prove our worth. Sometimes our busyness is like turning up the radio in our car because we don't want to hear the noise our engine is making. We need to be still. We need to listen. So that we can come before God honestly owning, confessing, and coming to understand our needs, our problems, our sins, and be able to be still and to listen for His voice as He guides us and touches us in ways that can transform us and make us more like Jesus. We don't keep the Sabbath when we just take an hour off to watch church. Keeping the Sabbath is a way of life. And it's not just one day a week. There needs to be sacred space throughout the day for you and for me. Those moments that we give to God and one another without compromise. I think about the times as a parent that I had the great joy and privilege of putting my children to bed. Of singing with them some nights hearing them pray, hearing them reflect on their day, and watching them drift off to sleep. That was a time that I tried not to give away because it made such a difference to them and to me. We're not to let things squander the time we have with God, to open our hearts and share our lives and just enjoy His presence. You need a daily time to be with God. 
sometimes in the midst of a time of busyness, you need to call a time out and, and stop and breathe and remember who you are. We need to do that with each other. We need time to talk to one another as husbands and wives and not just about the to-do list and to give each other work orders on what needs to be bought or repaired, but to talk about what's going on in our hearts, our joys and our sorrows, our dreams and our disappointments. That keeps us united in mission and in spirit. Well, God not only gave us a command to follow, he gave us an example to follow, and we know the perfect example is Jesus. If you look in Luke chapter 5, and verse 15, Jesus has just healed a man from leprosy. And, of course, the news of this incredible change he's made in the man's life spreads like wildfire. And as you and I would do, people were bringing the sick people they knew and loved to Jesus, hoping that he would touch them and give them new health. Just imagine how many people there must have been coming and looking for Jesus, wanting and needing a moment of his time. But listen to how Jesus responded to that. Luke 5, verse 15. Yet the news about him spread all the more, so that crowds of people came to hear him and to be healed of their sicknesses. But Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. Jesus didn't measure his faithfulness or his worth by how busy he was. Yes, he was busy. Yes, there were days and nights when he poured all that he had into the needs of people. But he also recognized that he needed time to be alone with the Father so that he could be confident that he was fully in focus on his mission, his purpose, and his priorities. And friends, if Jesus needs it, we need it a lot more. My grandfather, William R. Hester Sr., was a pastor. I didn't get to meet him. He died several years before I was born. But I do know of him through the stories my mom and her brothers and sisters told about him. But one of his practices when he would move to a new community to serve a new church is as soon as the family was moved into the parsonage, which it usually was in those days, he would go out and find a lonely place, a deserted place, maybe a place in the woods or up in the hills. He loved the mountains. And he would gather stones together and build what he called an altar. Now, this wasn't a place to offer sacrifices and... Uh, Knowing the way my mom and her siblings behaved, I believe they probably were grateful he wasn't in the practice of offering sacrifices to God. But it was a place for him to get away from the church and its meetings and its members, to get away from his family with their many requests and demands for his help and his assistance and his guidance and his discipline and just to be with God. When I think of my grandfather doing that in every field where he served, it taught me a truth that I hope you and I can live by. And that is altars are built. They're not found. My grandfather didn't walk into the woods and find a place that was all prepared for him to be with God. It took some effort. He had to gather the rocks. He had to put them in order. He had to stack them up. He had to work to set that place apart as holy ground to be with God, holy time to renew his spirit. Your altar won't be found. Sometimes we speak of time like a, 
a quarter that we find on the sidewalk. It's not like, oh boy, I found an hour. What am I going to do with it? We make time. We dedicate time. We protect time. And we must make our altars, our sacred spaces, our times to be with God. Now, I told you that this session was about the stress that comes from excess demands. If we will follow a lifestyle of Sabbath, if we will honor the Lord's day in spirit and in practice, if we will take times regularly in our day to stop and be with God, to remember who God is and who we are, we will be free of much of the stress of excess demands because God will help us know what matters and he'll set us free from all the rest. Thank you again for being a part of our time of prayer and study tonight. Next week, we'll look at another source of stress, an enemy we face, and how we can find a feast, even in the presence of life's challenging enemies. I hope to see you in worship. I actually won't see you, but I hope you see me in worship Sunday morning at 1030 on this Facebook page and on our YouTube channel. Invite someone to share it with you. God bless you the rest of this week. Take care and good night.